everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I'm sharing 10 brand new patriotic decor DIYs that are all really easy to do and budget friendly. If you're looking for some last minute 4th of July decor ideas, then I really think that you'll enjoy today's video. If you do, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Now let's go ahead and get started. For the first DIY today, I'm gonna to be making a star. And for my star, I'm using five of these paint sticks that I picked up from Lowe's. For two of the paint sticks, I'm using my Waverly chalk paint in the color Plaster, and I'm only doing a one coat of this paint for both of these sticks. Then for two more of the paint sticks, I'm using my Folk Art chalk paint in the color Tuscan Red, and again, just one coat of that paint. Then for my fifth paint stick, I'm using the Folk Art chalk paint in the color Nautical, and again, just one coat. Once they were all dry, I then used some sandpaper to start distressing them. I wanted these to have a rustic look, so I just sanded all five of the sticks to where I thought that it looked nice and distressed. And again, just did that to the blue, the red color, and then also both white. Then it was time to start assembling my star. I did the two white and the two red color ones first, and then I laid the blue color one across the top of my star. Once I had it all laid out the way I wanted it to be, I started hot gluing all of the sticks together where they touch. Next, I'm using some of these gold push pins that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. I'm gonna be using six of them on my star. I'm doing two of them on the bottom of my star where the wood pieces come together. The first one I just pushed in, but then it was a lot easier for me to just use my hammer. And then I did one in the center, and then you'll see me do the top ones later on. But I am using this God Bless America stencil that I picked up from Amazon last year, and I'll try to have it linked down below if I can find it again this year. I'm just getting the stencil centered to where the word America is in the center of the blue stick. And then I'm using some painter's tape to hold that into place. As you can see, I'm only gonna be using the word America. And I'm using my Waverly paint in the color plaster with a Dollar Tree stencil brush. Once it was dry, I removed the stencil. Then I'm using the push pins in the two places that I had missed early on. For the last step in this project, I'm using a piece of a jute to create my hanger for the back. I just created a loop and then hot glued that on the back side of my star. Here is my star all finished. It was super easy to make and budget friendly as well. So if you're looking for an easy, affordable project, this one would be perfect. And then for DIY number two, for this one, I'm using an eight inch wreath form from Dollar Tree. And then this red and white striped ribbon from Joanne Fabrics. I'm taking that ribbon and I'm tying it in a knot around the outside wire of my wreath form. And I left the tail ends a couple inches long. Then I'm taking this burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree and I'm tying that in a knot on the outside wire of my wreath form right next to my red and white striped ribbon. Once I have both of those on, I'm just pushing them together closely, and then I can add my third ribbon, which is this a navy and star ribbon, also from Joanne Fabrics, and I'm doing the same thing, just tying that in a knot right next to my burlap ribbon. And after I have those three ribbons on, I'm just rotating or switching up between all of my colored ribbon. I would do the striped then the burlap, then the star, and I did that all the way around the outside wire of my wreath form. Next, I'm using this sign on a stake from Dollar Tree, but I knew that I just wanted to use the circle part of the sign and I did not need the stake, so I'm just breaking that off of the back and I am gonna keep that for a future project. Then I'm painting the front of this sign with my Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster and I did two coats of this paint to get everything all covered up. Once that paint was all dry, I then took some of my Java colored chalk paint from Folk Art on one of my Dollar Tree stencil brushes and I started dry brushing this color around all of the outside edges of my circle and then I very lightly did that over the front of the circle as well. You guys know I love using stencils, so for this one I'm using this Let Freedom Ring stencil I got from Amazon and I will try to have it linked down in the description box. 
I'm centering it onto the front of my circle and then I'm using some painters tape at the top and bottom to hold it into place. I am using some painters tape on the bottom of the word ring and then the top of the word let because I am going to be doing all of my words a different color and I just didn't want to get paint in the areas I didn't want it to be. So for my word freedom, I am using my nautical colored chalk paint from Folk Art and then I'm removing the painter's tape from the words that I had them all covered up and then I'm going to be using that same tape over the word freedom so that I don't get any of my red color paint on where I just painted it blue. For my words let and ring, I'm using the Tuscan red color from Folk Art on both of those words. After the paint is all dry, I'm then removing the painter's tape and the stencil. Next, I am using some hot glue on the back side of my circle and then placing that in the center of my wreath form and just pressing that down so it attaches to the wires. Then I'm adding some of this nautical rope around the outside of the wood circle. To attach it, I'm using hot glue right on the wood and then just pressing that rope onto it. After I had it going all the way around the circle once, I decided to add a second strip of the rope. So I just attached the second rope right on top of my first rope and again, just use hot glue to attach it. Then to add just a little bit more detail, I'm using some of this white cotton cord from Hobby Lobby and I'm hot gluing it right in the center of where the two pieces of rope meet together. And I just thought that added some nice extra detail. Then I'm using one of these unfinished wood stars from Dollar Tree that came in the unassorted wood packs that they have there. I painted that with the nautical color paint and then I just distressed it a little bit with my plaster color paint and then attached that right on the front of my sign next to the word let. Here is my Let Freedom Ring wreath all finished. I love how this one turned out. Again, super easy, and I ended up just placing mine on a wreath stand on my porch. Now for DIY number three, I'm using three of these mini block cubes that came in a pack of cubes from Hobby Lobby. Then I'm gonna be like staining them with a wood wash tint, also from Hobby Lobby, and it is in the color Old Bronze, and I did that to all three of the cubes. Then I'm adding a little bit of my Waverly paint in the color plaster around all of the edges of my cubes to give them a little bit of a rustic look. For this project, I'm also using mini wood letters. These ones are from Hobby Lobby and I'm using the letters U, S, and A. And yes, I know the S is flipped the wrong way right there. For the letter U, I'm painting that with the Tuscan red color from Folk Art. And then for the S, I'm using that plaster color from Waverly. And then for the A, I'm using the nautical color from Folk Art. I'm also using four of these wood beads to help me paint them. I just placed them on a little wood pick and then I painted each one of my beads with that Waverly paint in the color plaster. Now I get to start assembling everything together. I'm using hot glue to attach my letter U onto the front of one of my blocks. I'm also attaching the letter S onto my second block and then for my third block I'm hot gluing my letter A onto the front of the block. Next, I'm stringing a piece of jute through one of my wood beads. And then once I have it all strung through, I'm tying a knot as close as I can to the side of the bead on each side. I'm then trimming off some of the jute and then I'm hot gluing the knot that's on the side of the bead onto the side of my block with the U. Then I'm doing the same thing. I'm taking another piece of jute and stringing it through my second bead and doing knots on each side of the bead as close as I can. Then I'm just trimming off the excess jute and then I'm gonna be hot gluing the, the knot of the jute right onto the second side of my wood block with the letter U. Then I'm putting hot glue on my block with the letter S and attaching that to the bead that is attached to the letter U. I'm then stringing another bead onto another piece of jute and doing the same thing, making knots on each side of the wood bead, then trimming up the jute so it's just the knots in the bead, and then hot gluing the knots um, on the blocks with the S and the A so that they are attached together. 
To finish up this project, I have to add one more bead on the end of my letter A. So I'm just doing those same steps as I did before with the jute and the knots and then hot gluing that bead right on to the other end of my A. Here are my mini USA blocks all finished. They are cute and rustic and they are perfect placed on a tiered tray. And now for the fourth DIY today, I'm using three of these framed succulents from Dollar Tree, but I only wanted to use the frames of them. So what I'm doing is just taking out the succulents and then I'm popping the back of these out. But they were really easy to pop out. I just pressed on the back and they, they just popped right out. And I am gonna be keeping the backs of them and the succulents for future projects. I'm also going to be using these wood block letters that say USA from Michaels. And I'm also going to be using some craft paper. This flagged craft paper, I believe, is either from Hobby Lobby or Joanne Fabrics. And I'm just using a pen to trace around my letter U. And then once I have it all traced out, I'm cutting it out. I should have traced it out on the front of the paper, but it ended up working out fine with me tracing it on the back of the paper. When I'm cutting the letter out, I am leaving a little bit of space around my lines so that I have a little bit of wiggle room to work with later on. Once I have it all cut out, then I'm placing some Mod Podge on the front of my letter U, then placing that flag paper right on top, pressing out any bubbles and letting it sit to dry for about 15 minutes. I'm doing the same thing with my letter S, only this time I'm using this star paper that I believe is from Joanne Fabrics, and I'm cutting that out once I have it all traced. Again, just leaving a little bit of space in between my or around my lines, using the Mod Podge to attach it, and then the same thing with the letter A, only I switched it back to the flag paper, and then to get out the center of my A, I used a little X-Acto knife from Dollar Tree. After I have all of my craft paper attached to my letters and the Mod Podge has dried, I'm then taking some sandpaper and I'm sanding around the outside of all of the letters to cut off any of the overlap of the paper and then to just give it a really nice, clean look. Now that my paper is all sanded around the edges, I'm painting around all of the outside of my letters. For my letter U, I'm using Tuscan Red from Folk Art. And then for my letter S, I'm using Plaster from Waverly. And then for my letter A, I'm using the Nautical Color from Folk Art. The last step in this project is to attach all of the letters to the frames. So I'm just placing hot glue on the bottom side of all of my letters. The first one I started with was the U and then I placed it in the center of the bottom of my frame. And like I said, I did that to all three of the letters. And here are my framed USA block letters all finished. This was such an easy project, just like all of today's projects. And you could always um, hot glue or attach the frames together, but I chose to leave them all separate. For DIY number four today, I'm gonna to be using this USA sign from Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna be using the backside of the sign for the front of my sign. And I first wanted to remove these stars to use for other projects, so I just heated them up with my hair dryer and then just popped the stars right off. Once I had them all off, then I flipped the sign over and started painting the backside with my Waverly paint in the color plaster, and I did two coats of this paint. I'm also using this God Bless America stencil that you saw me use earlier, only this time I'm gonna be using the entire stencil. So I'm placing it in the center of my sign and then I'm using a little bit of painter's tape on the top and the bottom of the stencil to hold it into place. And then for the color that I'm using, it is the folk art chalk paint in the color rich black. And I used my Dollar Tree stencil brush to apply the paint. Once the paint was all dry, I then removed my painter's tape and the stencil. To give my piece a more rustic look, I used some of my Folk Art chalk paint in the color Java, and I dry brushed that color around all of the edges of my sign, and then just a little bit on the front of the sign as well. For this project, I'm also using some of these unfinished wood stars, and I'm using three different sizes. 
For the largest star, I'm using my Tuscan Red paint. And then for the medium sized star, I'm using my plaster color chalk paint. And then for the smallest star, I'm using my nautical color chalk paint from Folk Art. Once all of the paint has dried on all of my stars, I wanted to give them more of a distressed look. So I'm using some 60 grit sandpaper to sand around all of the edges and then just rough each star up a little bit in the center as well to give them that nice distressed look that I like so much. Then I'm attaching all of my stars together using some hot glue on the back side and I just went from largest to smallest. Then I'm taking my stars and I'm attaching them to the top left hand corner of my sign where it's going to be hanging off of the sign just a little bit and I attach that with some hot glue. I'm then cutting down this red and white striped ribbon from Joanne Fabrics to the size that I want it to be. And I'm also going to be using some burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree and I'm cutting that down to the size that I want it to be as well. And I'm going to be using the burlap ribbon on the very bottom of my sign underneath my bike. So I'm just using some hot glue to attach the ends of that ribbon along the back side of my sign. Then I'm attaching the red and white striped ribbon over top of the burlap and I had cut that down just a little bit thinner than the burlap ribbon. And then I'm using a strip of this white cotton cord from Hobby Lobby right over top of the striped ribbon and I just hot glued those ends along the back side of the sign. To add some more detail, I'm using some of this white and blue uh, string from Dollar Tree and I doubled it up about four strands, I think, and I made a really simple bow and then I'm hot gluing that bow right in the center of my blue star. I'm then using some nautical rope from Dollar Tree and I'm stringing it through that top hole of my sign and then just tying a knot and I thought that added some really pretty detail. And then I wanted to add a little bit of blue to the bottom of the sign so I'm using that same blue and white string from Dollar Tree and about three or four strands of thickness and I'm just putting that right over that white cotton cord and using some hot glue on the back side to attach it just like I did with the other ribbon and cotton cord. So I did that on the top of the white cotton cord and then I'm also adding the same amount on the bottom of the cotton cord as well. Here is my God Bless America sign all finished. I really love how this one turned out and how all of the little details really came together. For DIY number six, this one is super easy. I'm using an eight by 10 canvas from Dollar Tree and I'm using one of the Dollar Tree little knives here to take the canvas off of the frame. These actually don't work that great. So I would recommend using a really sharp utility knife instead of one of these little knives, or you can just cut or tear off the canvas if you don't feel comfortable using a blade. So once I have that, canvas all removed off of the frame. I'm then taking some of these large like popsicle sticks that I got from Walmart and I'm just spacing them out to see how many I need to use. I ended up using six of them and I'm staining all of them with my Craftsmart wood stain in the color brown and I just used an old towel to apply the stain. Then I'm painting my wood frame with that Waverly paint in the color plaster. I did one coat of this paint and I painted the entire frame. I painted the outside and then the inside part of the frame as well because you will be able to see that. Then I started using some hot glue on the back side of my frame to hot glue all of my popsicle sticks and I am doing it so the stained side you can see from the front. For the last step in this project, I'm attaching this Home of the Brave silhouette that is shaped like the United States. This I got from Hobby Lobby. It was $2.99 and I got it half off. I'm just placing some hot glue on the back side and attaching it to the center of my popsicle sticks. Here is my picture all finished. This is probably the easiest project in today's video and I just really love the simplicity of it. Moving right along into DIY number seven, I'm using one of these hexagon shaped unfinished wood pieces from Michaels. And then I'm also using one of these mini candlesticks. And this did come in a pack of candlesticks from Hobby Lobby. And then I'm starting by painting the candlestick with that plaster color chalk paint. And I only did one coat of this paint. 
Then I painted my hexagon wood piece with that same plaster color chalk paint and I painted the entire piece this color and I did one coat of this paint as well. For this one, I'm using this stencil from Amazon. It did come in that same pack of stencils that I've been using today. And I did need to trim it down a little bit so that it would fit on the inside of my hexagon. So I'm just using my scissors to trim the stencil down. Once I had it all trimmed, I could just place it right in the center of my hexagon and I didn't have to use any tape to hold it down. Then for all of the lines for my number four, I'm using my Tuscan Red Chalk Paint from Folk Art and just a really small paintbrush. And then once that was painted, I let that dry because I'm gonna be using a blue color for the stars. And I did use a little bit of painter's tape over that, uh, the lines for my four, so that I didn't get any of the blue on the red that I just painted. And I'm using the nautical color from Chalk from Folk Art and it is a chalk paint and I'm using a small paintbrush to paint that on. Once the paint was all dry, I then removed my stencil. To give this piece that rustic feel like the rest of the project in today's video, I'm using my Java Color chalk paint and I'm just really lightly dry brushing this color on, again, to give me that rustic look that I love so much. And I'm doing the same thing to my candlestick. To finish this project up, I'm placing hot glue on the top of my candlestick and placing it in the center bottom part of my hexagon. This is my little pedestal sign all finished. I think it turned out super cute and I just love it so much and it was super easy to create. Now for DIY number eight. For this one, I'm just using this little unfinished wood sign. I believe this one is from Michaels. And then I'm using this red and white striped craft paper from Hobby Lobby. I'm just uh, taking a pencil and very lightly going around the shape of the sign so I know where to cut my paper out. Once I have that all traced out, I'm then cutting my paper down to size. For my paper, I'm going to be attaching it to the top of my or the front of my sign with some Mod Podge. So I'm just painting that Mod Podge onto my wood and then placing the paper on the Mod Podge and then just making sure I press out any bubbles and I'm letting that sit for about 15 minutes to dry. Once the Mod Podge is all dry, I'm then using some sandpaper to sand any of the paper that is overlapping the edges of my sign, and this is just going to give it a really nice clean look. I'm then painting all of the edges and then the base of the sign with that plaster color chalk paint, and I only had to do one coat of the paint. Next, I'm cutting down a piece of this burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree. I wanted it to go around just the top right corner of my sign, so I'm cutting it kind of in like a triangle shape, and then I'm hot gluing that to the top right corner of my sign. For the front of my sign, I wanted it to say 4th of July, so I'm using these unfinished wood number and letters, and I'm painting all of them with the folk art chalk paint in the color nautical. Then once the paint was all dry, I started placing all of my letters and my number like in the front of my sign to see where exactly I wanted them to be before I started to hot glue each one of them down. I'm using three of these wood stars from Hobby Lobby. These did come in a pack of stars and I'm just using three of them today. I'm painting two of them with the Tuscan red color from Folk Art and one of them I painted with the plaster color. I'm then hot gluing all three of the stars above the words 4th of July and I did the two red on the outside. I'm not really sure why I didn't do red, white, and blue, but I didn't. Then I'm using a piece of this white cotton cord. I cut it down to size so that it will fit across the very top of my sign and I used hot glue to attach it. And then I did a second piece of cotton cord going along the bottom of my sign and again, use the hot glue to attach it. To give this piece a little bit more of a rustic feel, I dry brushed the plaster color over top of the blue and the red wood pieces. And then my white piece, I just used a little bit of Java chalk paint. This is the sign all finished. It was super easy, again, like all of the other ones, and it is the perfect tabletop piece, or you could even use it on a tiered tray. 
Now for DIY number nine. For this one, I'm using one of these mini apple or fruit baskets. This one was from Joanne Fabrics. It was $4.99 and I got it half off of that. I'm starting by painting all of like the inside pieces with that plaster color from Waverly. I only had to do one coat of paint and I did, again, all of the inside pieces of the strips of wood. Next, I am painting all of the outside wood striped pieces with my Tuscan Red Chalk Paint from Folk Art and only had to do one coat of paint for all of those. I also painted the bottom of my basket with that same Tuscan Red color. For the top of my basket, I painted that with a nautical color from Folk Art. I painted a little bit of it and thought, oh, I should probably paint the top handle of the basket first since it is like a white color. And if I needed to repaint it, it would be easier to do than with the blue. So I just stopped painting it and then I painted the handle with the plaster color paint. And then I continued to paint the nautical top portion of the basket. Once it was all painted and dry, I then used that Java colored paint and I just really lightly painted this uh, over top of the entire basket. Again, to give it that rustic kind of feel that is with today's theme. And then I took my Dollar Tree stencil brush with a little bit of the plaster color paint and I went over top of the blue color and then the Tuscan red color as well. To fill my basket, I'm using some leftover burlap fabric that I had in my craft stash. So I just placed that into the basket. And then I'm using some red and white like beads from, or beads, <laughs> red and white berries from Hobby Lobby. These were $3.99 and I paid half off for them. I just placed them in my basket and then to go around those berries, I used some of my uh, boxwood stems from Walmart. Here is my mini basket all finished. It is super simple and a great accent piece to add to your decor for the 4th of July. For the final DIY today, I'm using one of these mini crates from Dollar Tree and I'm also using two of the unfinished wood stars from the assorted wood pack from Dollar Tree. I'm starting this one by painting the middle slat of my crate with a plaster color paint and I did this on both sides of the crate. Then once that was dry, I painted the top and the bottom slats of the crate with that Tuscan red paint and I only did a one coat um, on all of the slats. I painted the bottom of the crate as well with that same Tuscan red color. For the sides of the crate, I painted them with the nautical color chalk paint from Folk Art that I've mentioned a million times in today's video, and I did both sides of the crate on the ends. Once the paint was all dry, I took that Java colored paint and I just lightly painted that cover, cover, that color over top of the entire crate to give it that rustic look to match the rest of today's DIYs. And then I also took a, some of the plaster color and dry brushed that over the two blue ends. Then I took a, some of this white cotton cord and I attached it to the inside of the crate around the handle and I strung it around and through the handle four times just to add a little bit of a detail to this crate. After I had it all strung through, I then cut the cotton cord and hot glued the end of it down on the inside of the crate. I then added some Spanish moss from Dollar Tree on the inside of the crate with some of these boxwood stems from Walmart and then I added some of these little white flowers from Hobby Lobby. This is my crate all finished. It's a super simple again and just is a perfect accent piece for your 4th of July decor. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, I hope that you will consider subscribing and I would love to hear in the comments down below which project from today's video is your favorite and let me know, do you guys decorate for the 4th of July? Thank you so much for watching.